high on a hill above beautiful Lake Washington. My name is Lestro, and with me as always is the Guru. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. And you know how this goes, we're here to talk a little trash on the week's worth of sports. I don't know anybody except the Guru, and the Guru knows all. Man, you know, I know just a little something something, man. Just a little something, man. Guru, it is episode number 69, and the NBA finally takes center stage. The trade deadline's just passed and we've reached the all-star break. So we're talking the trades and how now the entire East seems to be going for it. Plus, the LA LeBrons got played by the now-fired Dell Demps and the big trade everyone expected never happened as Anthony Davis remains a Pelican. You know we're gonna talk about that. Then, there's a new football league in town as the Alliance of American Football's inaugural season is officially underway. Will it survive? And more importantly, is it worth watching? Guru's got the early returns on a live look in at the, uh, at the AAF. Plus, this week, Guru, we're debuting a brand new segment on Trash Talk Radio as we bring in the campus check-in with our man, the Almanac, to take a look at the week in college basketball. Going forward, he's going to be with us every time. Plus, Guru, you know we got a two-minute drill. Episode number 69, Trash Talk Radio. Let's roll. All right, you're a little bumpy, but we're back. We're back. Uh, just a little turbulence. A little man. turbulence. That's a good way to put it in there. We are back finally. It is good to see you again, my man. It is good to see you. You uh, you survive the snow apocalypse here in Seattle. I see. Oh, absolutely, man. I made it, man. Mama, I made it, man. <laughs> Mama, we made it. We uh, we should uh, open, of course, by telling people we've been uh, we've been off for a couple weeks here because if you weren't in the Pacific Northwest, you don't understand how everything shut down. We uh, we had a couple of days without it, but they weren't our recording days, and we just couldn't get those shows in. So we apologize for uh, for dropping them. But we are back at it now that we can get around the streets here again in Seattle. There's bread on the shelves one more time. We're ready to go. Guru, how you doing, man? Man, I'm living the dream, man. Don't you pinch me, man. Don't you pinch me. I imagine a, uh, uh, you had a very good Valentine's Day here this week. Yeah, man, considering my last year of Valentine's, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was on time. Right. I had made to, had, it. Yeah, right? I was early, you know, super duper early, man. <laughs> so history did not repeat itself. <laughs> Well, well done. We uh, we fell asleep early because we have a baby. So Valentine's Day was like any other night. Like, all right, all right, baby's in bed. I don't know. We'll have a glass of wine. We'll have some cake and then just pass out. That's uh, that's that's what it was for us. But it's good to see you uh, getting back into it. Not only is Valentine's Day here, but the NBA trade deadline followed directly by the All Star break. Right on top of things, as the NBA takes center stage in our uh, in, in the American sports landscape once again, Guru. Did you uh, did you follow all of this going in? And uh, are you ready to talk NBA? Let's get it. I'm all about that association, baby. The Guru loves the association. You feel so associated with the association because it's about the NBA. You talk about three things, baby. Really, you talk about two things. You talk about King James. King and James. You talk about about the Golden State Warriors. Golden State That's Warriors. all that matters, man. Everything all else is just a gap stopper, man. It's just a gap stopper. Well, uh, proving that he is, uh, whether he plays or not, the most important player uh, in sports, King James's absence in the East led to a flurry of moves at the trade deadline by seemingly every every team, every team every in the East <laughs> trying to make a run to go for it. They said, this is our chance. Uh, uh, LeBron is in the West. Who's going to play the Warriors? Mm -hmm. uh, we got a shot at it. Mm -hmm. Everybody except the Celtics mm -hmm. made a move going in here. The Sixers uh, pulled a couple of moves off. They brought in uh, Tobias Harris and and uh, and Boban. Love that move. Love that move. And uh, and they shipped off uh, Markel Fultz finally. Uh, uh, and I was impressed they got uh, a first round draft pick for him. So that's something something there. Uh, of Philly. course, you just anything. You go to Orlando, you could do anything. You could always skip the the magic. Uh, absolutely. Back. And uh, and uh, the the Raptors picked up a uh, 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 Marcus. Saul, that's a huge a pickup, pick, yeah. and then uh, and then uh, who went to uh, the box? Oh, uh, Nikolai Miritich. Miritich, Miritich went, to... went to the box to make that team better. So Ooh, I love that pick too. I'll tell you what, man, dog fight in the East. Who do you like coming out of this trade deadline, Guru? Man, the same thing I like from the preseason 
like I told you, and I'm going to say it again, that you always get hype. I like the Sixers for you going into right. it. I like them going into it. They was prior to the Jimmy Butler, you know, and I love them now where they position themselves because we remember this discussion we had when they had Jimmy Butler. I know. You're like, man, what are we doing? Are we about to go on it now? This I'm like, the process is like, we already passed the process stage and about processes. The process is about now. Yeah. You know, we already started the process to get to now. Now it's a different process now. The evolution process is we got to win. Well, you know, we gotta I was... Win. There's a, and you remember, a couple years ago, when I said who's building to beat the goal? To, the goal, y'all got to check the goal in this thing. We I, This was being predominant. I saw the process they were doing for the last couple of years. It's because it's yeah. to defeat the Golden State Warriors. That's all this team is for because they're not built to outscore them because nobody can. But they're built to give them to cause a lot of matchup problems, to give them a lot of torment, a lot of length. So I love the Sixers, especially with the addition with Tobias. That gives them another perimeter game. I love Tobias Harris. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the league. And I think he fits just perfectly as far as chemistry-wise because um, he's not a vocal guy. You know, he's a locker room uh, um, um, fuser. So like he's a glue. Fuse. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm um, coming into that, uh, and especially in an alpha-dominated locker room like the Sixers, he's going to blend in. Perfectly. Basically, he's probably blending in perfectly than Jamie would. Probably. You know, we talked about the win now attitude when they went for Butler. I said I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't on board with win now because this team's got. You know, I thought it had a, a wider you, window. You, you thought you wanted TJ McD- um You want TJ. I still McConnell, want TJ McConnell in there, you man. Want, I but I, the other Covington and uh, and, yeah. and Sarich. I still stand by the fact that this team with Tobias Harris would probably still be with uh, with Dario and a healthy Covington, a healthy Covington. Uh, in the position it is, but uh, I've learned to uh, I've learned to live this. I'm kind of in on the win now too. I, I've I've bought into the idea that without LeBron in the East, it's the time to go for it. And win now doesn't necessarily mean win the championship. You got to get to the finals first. And for any of these teams in the East, they got to prove they can get to the finals mm-hmm. because it's been LeBron all LeBron all the time. Mm-hmm. So the East has to prove that it can get there. And you know what? Now is the time. He's not mm-hmm. there. You got a chance. We saw what the Harrisless Sixers did to the Warriors uh, mm-hmm. uh, a week and a half ago as mm-hmm. well, where they used their size and just bodied exactly. up uh, the uh, the Warriors mm-hmm. and had their way there. I love, I love the Harris trade. I I think he. I think he's the guy we should have had before Butler. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like, but uh, with him and Jimmy Butler and Ben Simmons and uh, and and Joel Embiid, all stars Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. Mm-hmm. Um, that team's dangerous, it's, man. Yeah, exactly. That is exactly. that Sixers team is is rough and tumble. Now, that's not to say uh, the moves made by the others weren't huge, huge moves. I mean, the the Celtics hold Pat. Okay, we'll see where that goes. But what do you like? Do you like the Gasol trade in uh, in Toronto? Um, because they're in win now mode. They knew win now mode. It's just it's just something about that team. Uh, I just it just they never got me. It, mm-hmm. it could be. It's just like maybe like in football wise, it could be like the Detroit Lions or it could be the Chargers. Just about certain team. I don't know if it's their color. Just certain team. They could be good all they want, mm-hmm. but something is just not correct there. I think Gasol. That might be two years too late in, in a sense, <laughs> or a year and a half too late as far as being a championship impact trade per se. You know, I like uh, the trade the Bucks did. You know, I Great think, yeah, Meritage, I think that's another schematic fit for Milwaukee as far as what they have because they're building around the freak. Yeah. You know, that team is Giannis and surround him with shooters. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like just just put guys around him mm-hmm. in the way that you put guys around LeBron. Exactly. That's working in Milwaukee. So, so that's what I mean. So the Gasol, I know Gasol could do a little thing, stretch a little bit, but I, I think fit wise, those other guys fit their, their team they are now better you know Tobias fit the gel of um of the sixes you know marriage fixed fix what the bus going with yana so i think those are more seamless transition and that's why you see after the trade it's been a, a positive uh a natural positive swing so we are at the uh, at the deadline here uh, going forward who do you like coming out of the east if you had to pick a team now who do you like coming out of the east uh, to take on the Warriors, for the all same, intents and purposes. The Sixers, uh, I'm going to say this that the again. The Sixers? The Sixers. Um, going I like to that, Golden man. State. And, and just the thing is, I think everybody knows there's a little chink in the armor right now in Golden State. Mm-hmm. That don't necessarily mean they're not going to win it. But, but like I told you, and I'm going to say it again, standing on the record and say it, this is the last run 
You know, it's the last hurrah that I anticipated. I expected the Sixers to make it this year, lose to the seven, lose to Golden State, but they earned that Come natural back. experience, and now they have a little situation going on. All right, so then let's focus on the West, which essentially held Pat. These teams were built going in to try and take on the Warriors, knew where they were going to be. Most of the West stayed Pat. Surprisingly, in fact, Anthony Davis and the Pelicans. The Pelicans did not move Anthony Davis before the trade deadline. And then it turns out that they were just stringing along the Lakers the entire time anyway and had no intent to move him. Guru, I know that you've been you you've been talking about LeBron uh, this whole uh, this whole how did they, they fail to get him and and uh, what does this mean? You know, Lestro, this is what I've been saying about this guy, King James. Is getting into a situation and I'm trying to let the world know the king is done. He's beyond a king because he's so ruthless. You know, I don't want to say he's a dictator now. He's a dawn. He's the dawn? You know, you're going mafia? If we all know about LeBron, one of LeBron, and he makes this of it. You follow LeBron's life, his thing, he always subliminally makes because his favorite movie of all time is The Godfather. It's That's the thing he's always talked about doing the playoff time. He tweets, he gives you, he takes quotes from The Godfather. So, me being studied LeBron, LeBron organization reminds me of that setup. You know, and I'm not talking it's a, in a in a in a corporate way, right? Of course, you know. So it's like you know, King We're not James he's is criminal, he's, he's Ladon James. <laughs> you know, it's like I just want the people to know Ladon James because he is the dawn of sports. Because the way he streamed, like he he had the NBA by the balls. You know, he has his team with Rich Paul and Maverick. So think about this: you are a player, and then you have a a major agent that has most of, that has a lot of the other all stars as their as as his agent as his clients. So now you already have the marketplace as Lodon. Now you have the marketplace against the other owners of your team, your competitors. You know what I mean. So now you have the uh, advantage against other GMs, other team because it's all about guess what the product, which is for the Don, which is the players. So if you have the players, you have the leverage. Yeah, but th the problem was that the uh, the Lakers don't have the players. So my question, so, I got two questions mm -hmm. here. The first is, where did they go wrong? How did how did that not work? E easy, easy. Because of such his powers, that the little Don James power, the NBA and the GMs knew they don't want to lose power to a player. They didn't realize how powerful LeBron is. So Demps and those guys and his predecessors who basically get influence and advice from will tell him, stand your ground against LeBron James. Don't give in to Rich Paul and company. Be basically, and guess what happened? And he did stand his ground. Stood his ground. He stood Played his ground. Them, man. Played him. And as, as a dawn, we seen the Godfather. As a dawn. The hit was they, in. Once you turn around and become a snitch or you step down and you play them, you play the Godfather. Did you see how LeBron was calm? Let me say what happens, too. Let me tell you why the execution was on. Well, look what the end result was. The Lakers were getting crushed. They crushed. got crushed. Crushed. That 40-point loss, crushed. man. Crushed. Crushed. And then he came out in the media, right? Because this is when you know he's tormenting you you by that, saying. You saw that photo of LeBron on one side of the bench and everybody on everything. the other? Because they made him offer the entire team. And frankly, you know, just on a, from, a, from a GM move, from a standpoint of team building and everything, the New Orleans Pelicans should not have made that trade. Yes, they offered the entire Laker team for Anthony Davis, but that Laker team sucked. We saw them last year. They were no good. That right. was not what you want for a top five player. And at the same time, that's in division. A guy's got a year and a half left. You better get the haul, man. And uh, and, hey, and the Lakers it, didn't have it. It makes sense. If you, no, it, the Lakers got the, the most powerful man in sport. So if you're dead, no, there's no but. He made the decision, right? Because, and guess what happened? Just like I use the Godfather phrase, when you cross the line, you get executed. Right, they put the head in. And then what happened a week and a half later? Del Who's sitting looking there. for a job? Uh, Del Demps was sitting there, it went to black, and uh, Journeys Don't Stop Believing started mm -hmm. playing. And, uh, and that, that, that's how you knew. That mm -hmm. was, it, was, it was gone. It was gone. So this gets to show you that if you're a GM that comes to place and you go against LeBron James, because this is an example he's setting as he's shown his dawnship. If you're a GM now and LeBron wants to make a trade to, uh, um, from your organization and you say no, you might lose your job. Right. Now, how would you feel now? They talk about, you know, coercion and tempering and all that. You're talking about tempering. That's the ultimate muscle right there. You in the everywhere in the whole world can see the ultimate muscle 
That's like a witness in the witness stand come missing the, the week later. <laughs> Why ain't we nobody talking about it like that? You can't do that. You can't just sit there and act like this dude's going to lose his job because yeah, I he can't, didn't make that trade. I can't figure out how Demps, like they, what they say, because he didn't move AD. So that's what, there was no offer worth moving yes, AD. Yes, there was. When the king come calling, that's what the well, power that's what LeBron I mean. it's, is. It's, it's, it's an offer you can't refuse. Uh, LeBron made an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> yes. uh, and, and the ownership, uh, apparently, they talked to the owners afterward, and, and it got taken care of. And, and that's why I fade to black, uh, a queue up journey. Uh, uh, but... The, as as a GM, that's an offer I don't. I, you can't make. You know what? You get the better deal from from the Celtics if you wait till July. You, know, you wait till the off season. You get uh, to trade anything no, anyway. You don't because you it know, doesn't behoove the Pelicans at all to and move. You're him now. looking at the wrong thing because you won't be there to make that decision. <laughs> I don't even know why you even worrying about that. He tried to do that. What you're talking <laughs> about? That is what he tried to do. He's trying to wait for the summer, dude. And now he's looking for a job for I the know, summer. I know, he's getting his own job yeah. this summer. But what I mean is, as a smart GM, he like, did. yeah, yeah, <laughs> as, as the right move as a GM is you don't take the deal. Mm-hmm. The problem is you're dealing with LaDon James. James, yeah, exactly. Then, so if LaDon come offering, trust me. You make the move. You make the move. Right, right. Quick. He sleeps with the and fishes. don't forget, he got, a, he got magic. He got all the backing powers. He has all the leverage. What do you think? The, the New Orleans organization made it easy. Because of the AD situation, we got rid of him. Like they make that's that shows you because they were so embarrassed about what Will Dems did. Dale Dems, I meant what he did. Like they came back and embarrassed him by giving him the reason why we fired you because you handled that wrong. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, if I was an owner and I had an open GM position, I'm calling fucking Dell Demps because I want a guy that's going to see the king coming and be like, I can take him. You know, like, I want the guy that stands up to the king. You know, like, the owners on this one caved. Demps, Demps got balls of solid granite to be like, uh-uh, no, I'm not trading I'm not trading AD for the entire Laker team. We'll wait hey, till the spring and, and talk then. And this is what the king was doing. You saw it all the, hey, he was so calm, come on, come like, all right, the whole time. Just you said you ain't know what? I'm sorry, who? Hold on. Uh, uh, doing the NBA draft all-star selection? You said, huh? Okay. This is how it feels to be a GM? Okay. I got something for I you. I got you. I got something for you. And then guess what? Doing dinner. I'm taking, they caught him on the, They caught him doing dinner, man. I'm taking Kyrie. I'm taking <laughs> AD. I'm taking Kawhi. Uh, this is going to be my team in the all-star. It's just oh. an all-star game. It's just an all-star and are game. you guys going to believe that? AD and Kawhi. <laughs> and you're going to believe the, the, the LaDon James. Is gonna make his mark by next offseason. No GM in the NBA is gonna get in the way of LeDon James to set up the most superpower team in the history. It's like you know when you're such a don, you wanna like the richest man in the world, you wanna have the biggest yacht. Right. You know, there's certain things about to show your empire ship. You know what I'm saying? And LeDon James is gonna be the only player to have a five starting team that's an all-star. The whole starting team and the bench is all made of LaDon James Austin. I'll tell you what, man. I woke up in a cold sweat uh, a week or so ago like, oh, my God. What if Ben Simmons doesn't sign his rookie extension and goes to, goes to play in LA? LaDon James. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, what? Oh, fuck. That, that would screw everything. Like, is that, is that you what know there could be a chance. It, yes, there's a chance. <laughs> That's the problem. He's got a Kendall Jenner out there. He's got a TV show in development. Uh, LeBron's out there. I mean, like, I, I just. Hey, the funny thing is, you see Kyrie trying to make movies, right? Uncle Drew and all this. Yep. Guess who could put him in a bigger movie? Right. How'd you like to play? LaDon James. It's kind of funny how LaDon had to talk with Kyrie, right? And now Kyrie's yeah. thinking, Lord, this is all Godfather. When the Godfather come give you a whisper, what do you do? Oh, I'm sorry. You you peel back, don't you? Oh, man, yeah, you yeah. You peel back because he shows you ahead of somebody's family. You're like, oh, I'm sorry. What I said, yeah, that my didn't bad. happen. I, I, that never happened. Sorry. What do you need? <laughs> Can I get you some coffee, sir? Uh, so then the question here becomes, what happens with the Lakers for the rest of this year? I mean, is this a team that can you see them? They sit a couple of spots out of the of the playoffs right now. Can they make their way into the playoffs? Uh, if Le- uh, LeBron, let's assume he he stays healthy. Don, yeah, the Don. Like, if, the, if the Don wants to make it to the playoff, trust me. If the Lakers are one game away, there will be an extra game being played for some reason. Somehow, somebody might be a, a play that a game that wasn't played in 1978. Like, oh shoot! The Don said we got to play one more game to get in the playoff. It's gonna be a playing <laughs> game. Whatever the Don wants, the Don is gonna get. You guys are gonna see this now. It's Adam Silver. He works for the LaDon James. <laughs> it's the opposite of uh, uh, exactly. of Goodell. <laughs> He's working for the players. He works for LaDon 
James. Tampering? Come on, man. <laughs> they laugh at the word. That's how powerful LeDon James is. He's like oh, tampering. Oh, I got the two. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got one of those too. Yeah, so this weekend is All-Star Weekend. It is all tampering all the time as, as they got their teams together. As we speak now, uh, the Lakers are in 10th. Uh, they are four games back of the Clippers, who are in the eighth spot. The Clippers, by the way, who and traded. The tank. Yeah, Harris and Boban, they get a better pick. They hang on to their pick if they if they Lose. don't make the lottery yeah. team. Yeah, so they look like they're going for the, Lose, the, the yeah. tank on this one. So get them out of the way. But then the Kings are ahead of them still. The Timberwolves are floating around. I think the biggest worry is, is I wouldn't want to play LeBron and the Lakers as the number one. I would almost, if I were the Warriors, I'd let Denver get that number one seed and take on LeBron in round one and, and just go from there, man. See what see what happens. But I I can't count the Lakers out of the playoff run yet. We've seen it too many times. LeBron puts a team on his back and gets in. I say the Lakers make the playoffs this year, and I don't want to play them in the first round. Yeah, I think this is the worst thing in the NBA. It's like the worst thing that ever happened was that Dunn had to flex his muscle. They could just let that trade be because now during this summer, I mean, it's going to be ugly. I, I could see a Kyrie. I could see AD. I could see that happening with even a Jimmy. Like, I could see LeDon James saying, you know what? Hey, I don't care what y'all do. We finna win this ship because I am the Don. I could see, I could see Jimmy going. I, you know what? I, I could still see Jimmy leaving the Sixers. I don't think the Sixers can sign all four of these guys. Uh, I don't, I don't feel real good about Butler staying. I think Harris stays. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think Harris is exactly the guy we needed when we got Butler. But I think Butler signals that we can get those guys uh, on the Sixers. So. I don't know, man. I, we'll see what happens uh, going forward in the NBA. Going to be a fun final. It's not actually a half. It's like the final third of the season. It's all it's all downhill from here in the NBA, man, until we get to the playoffs. It's finally not. This is the only time I start watching ba NBA right. basketball. Now it, now it pays to watch every yeah. night. Uh, so, so, you know, we'll be talking more NBA as we go. But, but Guru, we also had – uh, a new sport uh, debut here. Not a new sport, Whoa. but a new a league. New sport. No, no, no. Old sport. New league debut in the past couple of weeks as the Alliance of American Football gets underway. A new 10 team, uh, no, 10, 10 games, 8 teams uh, football league, a spring league like the USFL was back in the day. Mm -hmm. So, my question, first of all, is I haven't had a chance to watch any of the games yet. Is this football worth watching, Guru? You know, it's 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 a different football, but I enjoy watching this football um, because it's what is catered for and geared for, just like you know the the D League per se in the basketball. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's on NBA TV. You watch it, you know. So it's it, you're not expecting to see obviously the Brady's and, and the Aaron Rodgers and the Aaron Donald, you know. But you get to see, you get to see a bunch of the guys that help you out. You know, you get to see where the Malcolm Butlers and them started. You get to see a Dougie Fresh get that you know that opportunity. Yeah, way better than the uh, than the Arena League. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So the beautiful thing I love about this league, the stats that shows about 80, 81 percent of the players you had NFL contract before. So that shows they already had, they have the ability to play at the highest level. So, that's so these are mostly guys who played uh, NFL mm -hmm. and then found their way out of the league, mm -hmm. looking probably looking to get back. Yes, exactly. Because that's the other promise of the AAF. Seems to be, unlike some of the other leagues, that they kind of want to be uh, a, a, a place where N NFL teams can watch to discover talent. They want to be, I don't want to say the minor leagues, but they certainly want to be a feeder league Absolutely. for the NFL to say, look, these guys can still play, these guys do still play. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Some Next guy, man up. Some guys just necessary just to need reps. You know, sometimes you get picked up, you get drafted, and you go to a loaded team. Like, say, you said, for, for instance, the Patriots. They have about 12 draft picks, but not tw all 12 guys are going to make the team. Mm -hmm. It's just not possible. They're talented. They got drafted, but they don't have enough numbers. You can only have 53 at that particular time. So there's nothing you could do. You're good enough. So now what do you do? You know, now you're just left to try to get into other teams like the other pool of players. Mm -hmm. So that's what this league does because is the guys, over the majority of the guys, are good enough to play in the league and have NFL experience. It could be from an injury, why this happened, or like I said, the numbers game, or some type of, you know, some type of deficiencies uh, majority of the time. So that's what makes this league, as far as uh, the gameplay, uh, better than the previous contenders that they had in the past. Um, and another key point I like, they utilize real NFL, you know, real, real coaches. Might not have to be all NFL. There's a lot of NFL experience coaches there. So that shows you the coaching is very, very high level because they have high level winning coach. 
You know, that's key because gameplay is based on coaching. You don't have this type of league like an XFL, don't have NFL experience that has JV coaches. So the gameplay is going to be very elementary. But this gameplay, because it's high-level coaching, that also helps because the players are getting the world, what they're really looking for, getting coached. Getting coached by those. Uh, now, a lot of these guys have NFL experience uh, on these uh, uh, AAF coaches Absolutely. as well. So Mike, they know. Mike Singletary is a coach. You know, Danny Erickson. You know, it's been real NFL Those coaches. are the two big names, Erickson yeah. and, and Singletary, mm -hmm. that, that people talk about. And that's that's exactly the case. You know, so Steve Spurrier. You know, like we have Hall of Fame. Like those guys are Hall of Fame coaches. Like they really, you know, like Spurrier, you have guys with high level NFL, I mean, coaching experience. Now, what about the players? Are there players in here that, that you're watching? Obviously, the quarterback play is not going to be NFL level. Absolutely. But I imagine, especially when you get outside of the quarterback position, that some of this play can be pretty high level. Yeah, there's two things I enjoy about what this league is going to do, like I love, because what I always mention, the offensive line playing the NFL right now, the D-line is way more superior than the O-line because of the gameplay and the style of play in college. So those guys are not really prepared yet. So this league is really going to get the offensive line the reps to get prepared. So right now in the inaugural season, the defense is going to be more superior than the offense due to the fact that like, defense really comes together more than offense. And that's so your game to watch anyway. Exactly. So you're going to see an ugly game for say, you're going to see a low score game in a session. Just the fact that defense is easier to start off. It's easy for me to go attack you than for me to create and make a play up. All right, what was the other thing that you wanted to, to see in this one? It's the defensive play in the lines, is it, or is it both lines that you were talking about? No, no, that's just, you know, that's not the, the repetition uh, aspect of things as far as that I want to see in this in, in this league. And always, like you, you hinted, the quarterback play is going to be a deficiency. It's always going to be a deficiency due to the fact that there's only about, really, there's only, there's 32 starting quarterbacks, but there's only about 12, 13, 14 of them that's really you know, right, even in the NFL yeah. level, yeah. So it's a hard, it's a, it's a unicorn. That's one of the hardest positions to find in and out. So it's never going to be what it is. But I like this because I think this is going to be a place where some of those, some of those guys we don't hear about in the draft, some of the smaller college guys, you know, even a guy like Kurt Warner could have played in this league uh, to find his way to the NFL before mm -hmm. going through like the arena league. This mm -hmm. is a place where I think we're going to see second chances, and uh, and I think we're, I think it's going to be a good feeder league mm -hmm. for the NFL at some point. Maybe not this year. Oh, no, some of the guys know they are going to the NFL. Some are already making it, yeah. No, they're going. No, they are. It's because some of the guys already had NFL experience. It could be whatever reasons are. They're signing. Mm -hmm. they, there's already been reports. There's couple, some of the guys that's already been offered, and the NFL teams are getting Perfect. associated in it. So, no, this is a legitimate. I see this is going to stay because the thing they really see. The one key thing they're doing, they're not going against the NFL. They're going with the NFL. Right. That is so that's a beautiful thing aspect of it. And that was what killed the USFL. When they were a spring league, mm -hmm. they did just fine. When they tried to compete, it ends because the NFL owns Sundays in mm -hmm. the fall, period. And, if, and, if they're there, they're, they own it. And this is another, you know, another middle finger to kind of like the NBA to be like, hey, guess what? We can still try to draw some of your audience during your season. Right, the, the sport, not exactly. the NFL, but they'll still get the attention. Exactly. Any talk of football is... Uh, it's NFL because it's on the NFL network, as you know, I said on the channel, so you're going to be on the NFL base. That's right, any talk of football... I'm not a football expert. ...is good for uh, for the Shield. They know they're going to make their money of it. All right, Guru, well, we are uh, running out of time here on segment one. Let's take a quick break, quick break here on Trash Talk Radio. We're going to come back in segment two with our brand new segment, the Campus Check-In with the Almanac. Stick around for that. We're going to talk college basketball. You know we got a two-minute drill. Trash Talk Radio. Stick around. TTR.